Welcome to episode 170 of the Twim Show. This is your Sajid and today I'm going over the notable news and updates from the week of July 17 through 21, 2023. First off, I have an update, uh, actually two updates from TikTok. Number one is now you can directly sell on TikTok from your WooCommerce store. Now WooCommerce store, if you are unfamiliar with it, this is basically the shop system for business owners or e-commerce owners who uses uh, WordPress. So if you are not using Shopify and you're on WooCommerce, this is good news. And obviously to participate in the program, you must have a store, uh, WooCommerce store in the United States and be approved by TikTok. Once approved, you can, uh, merchants can create a TikTok shop and start selling their products. So this is pretty good. I, I love that, uh, you know, in the past, I believe Shopify had some integration I could be wrong, don't hold it against me. Uh, but nevertheless, this is good uh, if you have a WooCommerce store. I know we used to have a couple of clients in the past who had WooCommerce store just because they never went to Shopify. And actually Shopify gets very expensive. Uh, if you ask me, we have a client right now who uses uh, Shopify and the add-ons, man. I mean, at the end of the month, uh, she ends up spending like 300 plus dollars, uh, you know, just because of add-ons and that you know, recurring revenue that she's paying. And I'm not trying to convince her to move to WordPress. That's to each his own. But I just want to say, you know, uh, you know, this is good. Anyway, let's move on. The next one is from TikTok as well. TikTok has launched ad transparency library similar to what Facebook has done, similar to what Google has done. And so this is really a good thing from TikTok. However, there is one caveat right now. Uh, TikTok's commercial content library, which is what they're calling it, how uh, is commercial content library is only available uh, to see ads from Europe, even though it's accessible to everyone globally right so there is this little caveat now what that basically means is tiktok is working to include advertising data from countries such as us in the future but they haven't given a specific release date yet uh, nevertheless it's a step in the right direction if you ask me and what else you're going to see so ad transparency library you know what it is right you get to see all your competitors ad what kind of ad this is working what's not working things like that and just gives you more idea to do things okay with that let's jump into meta uh the <laughs> company formerly known as facebook so you know meta's threads app launched like about two weeks ago there was this big you know um rise in adoption and everybody's like woohoo meta threats that's the next best thing since sliced bread and it re reached like in a hundred million users by the end of the weekend but anyway there are some uncon unofficial reports that usage has declined to all the way down to 70 percent in threads and i don't blame anyone just because you know I've, and you know i wasn't a big fan of threads uh, when it was launched and it was covered like two episodes back only because you know, this is yet another clone copycat of another social media, right? And, you know, why Reels? Reels is a copycat of TikTok, but why Reels did well is that Reels wasn't a separate app by itself. It's not, it wasn't a standalone app. It was weaved in into the existing platform, which is Instagram and Facebook. So as a result, people didn't have to go to yet another platform and use that. And of course, you know, threads, they had this sneaky thing where if you delete your uh, threads account, you would get deleted into um, Instagram as well and vice versa, things like that. But this is not the update to talk about and bash threads. Uh, or meta for that matter. I just wanted to say, you know, where this is coming, you know, threads would have gotten a lot more traction if it was weaved into Instagram by itself because Facebook has that capability. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of people who were wishing that, you know, hey, why not Instagram has that? And I will tell you, I would be a, I would be a more... Uh, daily user of threads in that aspect because then I can actually... Sh uh, say what's on my mind in Instagram much more easily 
then I would do in threads because now I have to go to another app and even though it's already logged in, it's just like a big mess. It's just That's just me. If I was a product manager, if I was running it, I would be thinking from that angle. Uh, but you know, hey, uh, they have probably the best and the brightest and who knows, uh, just let to each his own. Focusing on this, uh, Met, uh, Meta has basically published this report on how to integrate your brand with threads. Uh, it's basically giving guidance on how to integrate uh you know, how to, you know, go and make a statement on threads, grow to, uh, grow followers and things like that, do polls and quizzes, and you can read the show notes if you're really interesting in, uh, interested into it. But for me, you know, I've always found all these brands giving all these tips and suggestions. And you know what? Tips and suggestions are very easy to give out, right? And I think the marketing team needs to do something that will say, you know what, we are doing something to grow and doing all sorts of things but you know i think these are like you know very crappy things for the marketing team to do versus you know saying you know i would think you know they should do something more substantial and tangible uh, that you know can actually measure the roi of all these efforts because you know, i'm sure they have put resources they have put a dollar amount to get to publish this thought uh this article, which I don't think really anyone is going to look in and it's going to really work. Anyway, that's about it. But if you really want to check it out, uh, go read the show notes and you'll find more information about it. Now, moving into analytics, uh, Google has added 30 new e-commerce metrics in GA4. Some of the items, some of the metrics are really good, uh, you know, such as, uh, let me see, gross item revenue, gross purchase revenue, refund amount, you know, so this will help you to actually uh, build better reports. And in the past, before these uh, metrics were there, you'd have to do computation and do all sorts of things. So overall, it's really good. I don't want to go too deep into this uh topic right now just because this uh, show is all about giving you the information of what it is. Uh, I haven't put the, I'm not going to put the list of all 30 metrics in the show notes either just because it's just going to get a long, uh, long show notes. What I will probably do is actually, no, I'm looking at my notes. I cannot really put that either. Uh, you need to work with your uh, Google Analytics team or a Google Analytics person and basically figure out what else you can do. This actually helps, this metrics helps for e-commerce store owners, right? And if you're running e-commerce, you should have a Google Analytics person. If not, get one. Trust me on that. Okay, uh, Google has updated uh, misrepresentation policy. Uh, it's a long policy. Basically, all it's saying is, hey, if you want us to show your products and services in Google search, make sure uh, everything is hunky-dory, everything is kosher, and obviously there is a list of things for under business transparency, trans uh, business identity, transparency, online reputation, professional design. These are the four main topic, right? And obviously Google wants you to create and verify Google business profile, share up-to-date information in the Merchant Center, blah, blah, blah. It's all in the show notes page. Uh, but, you know, professional design basically means you need to have SSL on. Uh, brands' website should be easy to navigate, should contain, shouldn't contain any unnecessary redirects or redirects to broken links. Try to avoid placeholders where possible as this gives Google and the customer the impression that the website is still under construction and not yet ready for search engine results page. So those are some of the stuff uh, I have just highlighted and sp shared with you on this show. If you really, really are intr intrigued or interested to know what Google thinks you should be doing on your web page, website, uh, landing page, then do check out the show notes, right? I definitely encourage you to do this and I'm not doing this so that, you know, there is a click that goes to my show notes and, you know, you click on it. Uh, I'm not really, I don't really care about those things. Uh, I think what really I care about is me capturing this information uh, for myself and also share it to whoever may find it helpful. Now, of course, if you find it helpful and you think I'm doing a good job, it will be appreciated that if you could give me a thumbs up, give me a, leave me a review, leave me whatever you like, or maybe some constructive criticism, like, you know, what I should improve. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Now, let's move on to the next update again on the Google SEO front. This is about 
uh, coming from Google search relations team about avoiding spam bricks with your domain name. And this was covered actually in episode 163. This is episode 170 and I'm talking about episode 163. So that's about like seven episodes back, which is about roughly two months back. We talked about this. I talked about this, which is basically if you go for, you know, extensions, domain names such as .xyz, .club, then Google is saying there is an increased chances of spam because what happens is most spammers, this, since these are do cheaper domains, they buy all these domains .xyz .club, and then they use it for spamming people, uh, creating bad websites, and obviously uh, you are known by the company you keep. So Google is saying that sometimes when you use this, you can actually get dinged by it. So be careful. Of course, if your business necessitates uh, that you need to have a .club or .xyz, then do that. If not, find something else. That's one. Number two is having something like, you know, .coffee extension uh, does not mean you are going to rank higher. So a lot of people are going to say, and, you know, I've heard this myself, uh, where, S, quote, unquote, SEO gurus are saying, you know, hey, if you have, you know, sajid.coffee, you are going to get SEO credits, SEO, you know, plus points, brownie points, and that will actually rank you higher. And the search relation team just, just basically came out and says, hell no, we don't do that. Uh, so whoever does that, and I know a lot of uh, gurus out there do that, uh, run away from them as fast as you can, okay? Uh, and the thing here is that you should pick a domain name that actually is tied to your uh, company, the branding and marketing, and talking about branding and domain uh, marketing, the next update actually weaves in much uh, nicely, which is, uh, again, John Miller, again, on the same podcast, uh, which is the latest episode, July 20th, is when they released it. And they're saying your domain name matters, right? Your domain name matters. Your domain name should prioritize long-term branding over keyword-centric SEO strategies, right? Uh, why I say that is, again, I still remember uh, there is this big guru on Facebook and he was saying a few about a few months back where, you know, you should have keywords stuffed in your domain and that should give you rank higher. And the update that's coming from the search uh, relations team is saying, you know, no, uh, that doesn't work, okay? Just focus on domain name uh, that reflects what you do, how it works, things like that. Your domain name is not going to influence search rankings. That's about it. Okay. Uh, the other tips that M Mueller, John Mueller is giving is avoid hyph hyphens or numbers in your domain name. Key keep your domain name short and concise. Make sure your domain name is available in all relevant top level domains. That's all. With that, let's move on to the next one. And it's a very interesting question, which is, is 301 versus 404 better? Which one is better, 301 or 404? 301 is basically a status code that goes back to Google uh, that says, you know, hey, this page was permanently moved. Uh, 404 is this, this page does not exist. Now, Google's Gary Ellis says, you know, it depends on, uh, you know, case by case. You, there is no, uh, like, big, broad rule that says 301 is better than 404. Normally, 301 is better, but it depends on the situation as well. So 301, you do it like you know, if you're merging pages, you're taking three or four things and putting it into one page, you may want to say, hey, this is 301, because that says that now 404 would be one good example would be if you were... Uh, you deleted a page because that created that contained wrong information that got uh, spam that got uh, spam or somehow got hacked. You want to remove that and do a 404. That's just a big rule of thumb, but actually depends on case by case basis. Uh, again, if you are unsure, work with an SEO person, a good SEO person. The other thing that's coming out this week is that Google's John Miller says having good page experience is not enough for SEO. Yes, good page experience is a factor. It's a ranking factor, but that does not necessarily mean that just because your page loads fast, it's mobile friendly, doesn't mean you are going to shoot up to the top of the search results page. If you want to shoot up to the top of the search results page, you need to have a good page experience. That's for sure. The other thing you need to have is high quality uh, content, helpful content content that is relevant to the user search in, in intent. Do not try to game it. If you try to game it, you're not going to be able to stay there for long, even if you make it up to the top. 
talking about content, Google doesn't favor AI generated content. There was this article from Vox that says, you know, uh, Google likes AI content and Google's Dan Sullivan came out and they says, oh, Danny Sullivan came out and they say, hell no. Uh, there is a lot of AI content on the web. Uh, most of them are trash. And in fact, it doesn't, Google really does not like it. Now, having said that, Google doesn't care whether you, the human, is writing it or the AI is writing it, regardless of who is writing it, as long as the content is helpful, uh, content is informative, uh, then we are going to index it. We are going to index it. We're going to rank it. We're going to show it. Folks, if you have been following this show, I know I keep on telling the same thing, right? Helpful content, right? Helpful informative content, you know, EAT, EEAT uh, model, right? Expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. And then the first one is experience. You should be all good. Anything else, does nothing else matters. So I hope this helps. And let's move on to the last topic of this week, which is should you rewrite your site titles because seems like what Google is doing is Google is rewriting search titles or site titles when it shows that title in the search engine results page, right? A lot of people are saying, hey, maybe we should just change it because Google is changing it for us. Might as well follow Google. To that, John Miller says, hell, uh, wait a second, don't do it so fast. And there is a lot of history behind site title. Uh, the purpose of the site title is, first of all, is to kind of give you a, a summary of what that page contents um, or page title, let's just say, uh, the page title uh, kind of says what this page is all about in 10 or less words. Now, a lot of SEO people, quote unquote, try to game the system by stuffing keywords in the page title or the site title. And over time, Google got, uh, got the hang of it that people are doing that. So they started saying, you know what, we are going to ignore that. And we are going to basically scan the page and we're going to see what this page is all about based on our assumption. And then if we are ranking it for, let's just say, uh, Google Ads, we are going to rewrite the title if it doesn't already talk about Google Ads. And we're going to rewrite the title when we show the search uh, results page and we're going to put Google Ads. Now, oftentimes you could have a long page and, you know, you could talk about marketing on the top and then Google Ads in the middle. And then, you know, you could again talk about marketing and Google might just rank the middle part of that page that talks about Google Ads. And then when they show the page, it's going to rewrite the title for that, you know, for that ranking, right, and show it. So I know it's not a very uh, easy topic to talk about, but what this is all about and what you need to know is site or page title matters. You should always put a page title that is relevant, which is uh, which talks about what this page contains. Now, if you're unsure, you could always put that content of the page in chat GPT and ask it what this page is all about and get some feedback. Now with that also chat GPT or Bard, be careful because sometimes all this generative AI have, you know, AI hallucination can give you incorrect information. So you need to be careful, right? You cannot just blindly take what they're giving you and use that. But you could double check and you could check your search, uh, Google search console to see what words you're ranking for and then kind of work backwards from it. The, root, the thing which you need to walk away from this update is that titles matter. Titles, you shouldn't want to game it. Uh, you know, you should put something that you think talks at a high level what this page is all about. And then you kind of start measuring it and go from there. Okay. With that, folks, that's it for this week in marketing. I hope you found some value. If so, please drop me a line, give me a review, give me a rating, because that would really help and let me know how things are progressing on my end. And I'm signing off until next week. Take care. Bye-bye.